Welcome back fellow learners. Today we're going to dive deep into a fundamental and widely used data type in Java programming, string. Of all the things we humans do, there is one we do more and that is use language, whether it is speaking, writing letters and so on. We're constantly communicating with one another. Same is true in computer programming so let's not waste any time and get started with understanding what strings are all about. I'm Mujib, I'm a self-taught software engineer and former instructor. I know how to learn and teach effectively and I'm dedicated to sharing my techniques and experience with aspiring developers like yourself. I was in your shoes not long ago and I want to reassure you that you're fully capable of becoming a rockstar developer. Let's get started. To take this tutorial, you will need the following. Basic understanding of Java and programming, preferred code editor, and focus, which is the first step. Let's do this. We're going to fully grasp strings in Java. String is a sequence of characters, but it is not a primitive type. When we create a string in Java, it actually creates an object of type string. String is immutable object, which means that it cannot be changed once it's created. The string class has a number of methods, some of which will be discussed. Java uses string being an object as its advantage for memory management meaning that if you create a string using string literal java stores the string and string pool that means if we have two variables with the same value then java will store a reference of the first variable's value as the second variable's value that means it will not create the same string again, thus saves memory. To begin, let's understand the problem that string solves. In Java or any other programming language, we use string to store human readable text, like words and sentences. Strings are used to communicate information from a computer program to the user of the program. A program may also accept string input from its user, such as username and password. Ready to see a real example? There are many ways to create a string object in Java. Using string literal, for example, name, um, string name equals to John. And if we log that to the console name and we run this program, uh, we see John in the console. Cool. So this is uh, the most common way of creating string. Uh, strings are enclosed, as you can see, in double quotes. Uh, when we create a string uh, using double quotes, JVM or Java Virtual Machine uh, looks in the string pool to find if any other string is stored with the same value. If found, it returns um, the reference to that string object. Otherwise, it creates a new string object with the given value in the string pool. Uh, for example, if I create another um, variable called name2 with the same value, Java Virtual Machine, instead of creating um, this value also in, um, in the um, string pool, it goes and checks if it exists. In this case, it does exist and it's stored inside this variable. So it grabs a reference of that and stores it inside of um, this variable. So now those both of those variables are referring to the same value in string pool. And thus, we, if we um, use the comparison double equal operator to compare those two names, um, we should get true because they're referring to the same uh, value inside of the string pool. 
we can also create a string object using the new operator uh, on the string class, just like creating a new object for instances of custom classes that we created in the previous tutorial. Um, the string class has 13 contractors to allow, um, um, to allow us to provide the initial uh, value of the string using different sources. Uh, for example, one source could be um, character array. Um, let's call it, I'm not sure what to, let's call it um, city chars or characters equals to characters. Um, let's just come up with a beautiful city name ABC to make it short and quick. Um, all right, and let's go ahead and create our string um, instance or string object. Uh, let's call it city equals to string class new string. We're going to call the one of the contractors of the um, string class, and we're going to provide it the city ch characters as a source. And if we log that to the console, um, oops. Uh, run it from here. Mm. We see ABC. Cool. Um, so, what is the difference between using the string literal or the new operator on the string class? Um, the difference is we already talked about the string uh, literal. Um, it does not duplicate, it saves memory. But in this case, every instance of a class is unique. Um, so in that case, uh, when we create, for example, uh, passing as a source string cd2 equals to new uh, string, and if we pass a string literal to this as source, um, if we use the um, as, um, the if we compare CD one with CD two using the the double equal operator, we're going to receive false because those two are two different objects in memory. Um, that and that's why we said they're unique instances of and we can create of this class and we can create as many of them as we need. This one is refer referencing a different memory location. This one is referencing a, another different memory location. And that's why they're not equal. Um, and those two strings have been duplicated in the memory because we are creating them with the new operator. We're creating a new instance of the class with this value inside of it uh, two different times. Um, so, but we can still compare the values inside of those two objects using the equals um, method dot equals, and we can compare it with the CD2. If we run this now, we will see they're both returning true because we're comparing the actual values instead of the, um, act, uh, the objects themselves. Um, the string object um, is a robust object in Java um, with many, many useful methods. Uh, for example, like um, name.length to return how many um, characters it contains or the length of the string uh, for characters. If we look at that to four characters and we have, for example, name dot um, to uppercase. We can change a string to uppercase using a locale. Um, if we log this to the console, we see John. But remember one thing as we said that string objects are um, um, immutable. Once you create them, you cannot change them. That means that to uppercase, 
method returns a new string object instead of modifying the existing one. But so right after uh, turning that name to uppercase, if we log the name variable again to the console, we will see that it has not been changed. It's still lowercase. Um, all right. Um, that's it. If you would like to know more about strings or any methods in particular, please let me know in the comments. All right, everyone. As we wrap up today's coding tutorial, I want to share another valuable learning hack with you. This one is simple yet incredibly effective. Teach to learn. Once you have learned a new concept or solved a challenging problem, try explaining it to someone else, maybe a friend or even to an imaginary audience. This could be through a blog post, a video, or even a casual conversation. The process of teaching forces you to organize your thoughts, clarify your understanding, and uncover any gaps in your knowledge. It is a powerful way to reinforce what you have learned and gain a deeper understanding of the subject. Plus, it's a great way to help others learn too. Let me know in the comments what else would you like to learn from me. See you next time learners.